Today I want to start with a prayer, a prayer that's really a hope and a hope that has come to us and survived for us for at least a couple of thousand years. May the world be at peace. May those with restless minds become serene. May all of us learn to care and think about others. May their minds, may our minds, be engaged with what is uplifting. And may our hearts be filled with selfless love. That happens to be a prayer from the Hindu tradition, but it could have come from any of the traditions that belong to all of us, that call to all of us that our restless minds would become serene, that we would all learn to think and care about others. <coughs> and has this call ever been needed more urgently? It's pretty much what we have been saying to one another all this week. It is a contemporary prayer, it is an ancient prayer. And doesn't it give us a perspective too on how perennial this quest is that we would live alongside one another, offering one another these most fundamental gifts of all, which are the gifts of peace, of safety, of respect, and of love. The key impulse expressed here is surely learning, that we would learn to live in this conscious way, that we would awaken to our potential to live in this conscious way, learning from our mistakes and learning also from what goes well. Learning what heals, learning what lifts our spirits, and learning also what lowers them. Learning what lights candles in the darkness, both metaphorical and actual. And my life has taught me this, that we discover these fundamental, vastly crucial lessons, not through dogma, not through belief, not through instruction, but through experience. Through reading the face of one another, through seeing what causes anguish and what brings bliss, contentment and consolation. Let us read the faces of one another with far greater skill and let not only our hearts be moved by that, but our conduct also. It is through seeing through our own eyes that we wake up. It is through seeing with our own eyes what brings joy and takes it away that creates change in our hearts and in our world. And how should we do this? Because I cannot have you leaving this church today without a stronger, more grounded feeling of how to do this. You draw, I would suggest, on what you already know. You connect your feet to the earth and you look around you. You connect yourself to life and to daily living and you look around you. You bring the sacred to the everyday and you look around you. You understand that all of life is sacred and you look around you. This not only creates change, it wakes up the qualities that we attribute to what we call the enlightened mind. It's such a beautiful phrase. The enlightened mind, a mind where light can shine even on its own darkness in order that it will not continue to generate what causes darkness. And the glorious news is that it is not only special people who have the potential to wake up the enlightened mind, it is all of us. It is every single one of us. 
We have this divine spark. We have this tikkun olam, this power to heal the world. This divine spark gives us our part to play. And no one else can do it for us. And how lovely, again, how lovely it is to know that we don't learn this through the instruction of another person deemed to be wiser than we are. We learn it through our own experiences and through reflecting with some humility and courage on our own experiences. This is I think, after a lifetime of thinking about these things, the only thing that will heal our world, for each of us to take responsibility for the light that we can and increasingly must bring. We also learn something else in this, that we are free to bring these gifts. We are free to bring happiness. We are free to bring healing to others and inevitably to bring happiness and healing also to ourselves. I am so moved by that line from Anne Frank which is in your order of service today. A single candle, this brave and beautiful girl wrote, a single candle can both defy and define the darkness. Each of us here, each of us listening to this at any time whatsoever, each of us in this church and way beyond it, can defy the darkness. We can defy it in the peaceful and most gentle way possible. And we need to do this, especially when so many people are eagerly rushing to tell us that violence is inevitable and that hatred follows closely behind it. Or when they rush to tell us that as a human family made up of billions of individuals, billions of individual lives, when they tell us we can't do any better. We can do better. We can hold and we can enhance the light we are bringing to the world. The winds of God's grace are always blowing, said the poet Rabindranath Tagore. The winds of God's grace are always blowing, but it is up to us to raise the sails. We have seen so much grace given. We have seen so many sails raised in this week in our beautiful city of Sydney. Following the appalling loss of Katrina Dawson and Tori Johnson, we have seen so much grace flowing. We have seen so much grace flowing in the wider world also this week. And now I'm thinking of the lost children in Cairns. I'm thinking of the lost children in Peshawar. I'm thinking of the children in South Sudan and I'm thinking of children everywhere in so many places in our world. Not only are our prayers with them and with all those who love them, but so are our resolutions to ensure that they haven't died in vain. They deserved a safer, more peaceful world. They deserve to grow up in happiness and we must do that for them and we must create that world in which other children can find those qualities. And Frank's wisdom that a candle also defines the darkness speaks beautifully to me. It reminds me that darkness is limited and light is unlimited. Divine light is infinite. Not only can we transform darkness with loving action and with grace, 
we will also transcend darkness in that same way. Teachings urging us towards claiming the light, living in the light, giving the light, being the light, come in all our traditions. And it is never passive. It is always a conscious, active choice made day by day and hour by hour and sometimes moment by moment. Asking yourself, how can I bring light to this situation? How can I bring light to my own mind? And allowing inspiration to arise both from within and from without. And there is another very short list that I want to share with you. Practical, practical choices that each of us can make on a daily basis. Each time, for example, you say no and no again to violence as entertainment. Each time you say no and no again to violence as a solution for social problems. Each time you say no and no again to your own resentments, however justified you feel them to be. Each time you say no and no again to complaining or criticizing rather than praising comforting and affirming. Each time you check what it is that you talk about most and how much radiance this is expressing. Each time you bring someone in from the margins, each time you welcome a stranger, each time you share time with a, someone who is suffering, each time you make sure that no one in our family feels exiled from it. Each time you learn from your own mistakes, each time you forgive, each time you open to new, ancient, timeless inspiration, each time you play, each time you laugh, each time you bake cakes, each time you sing, each time you dance, each time you remind yourself that this world is also good and blissful, Truly, in this matter, there is no them and us, there is only us. There is only us. We are the light. Without exception, we are light carriers, we are light. Whatever the sorrows, whatever the darkness, this is our choice. This is the choice that creates who we are becoming individually and collectively, how prepared we are, how courageous we are, how ready we are to bring light to the darkness. I want to end with a very short prayer. I've included it in my own book, Heaven on Earth, which is very much about bringing light to the darkness, about creating a world that exemplifies how precious, how sacred, how holy life is. And this particular prayer comes from a most awakened soul, Rabbi Abraham Isaac Cook, who died in 1935. Radiant is the world soul, he says, full of splendor and beauty. I just love that line alone. Radiant is the world soul, and it is in the world soul that we all belong. It is in the world soul that our soul also beats. He goes on. The pure righteous do not complain of the dark, but increase the light. They do not complain of evil, but increase justice. They do not complain of heresy, but increase faith. They do not complain of ignorance, but they increase wisdom. May your wisdom increase. May my wisdom increase. May the wisdom of all beings in our shared world increase. May the light of love 
fill our hearts and our world, today and every day and evermore. May you and I, may we all awaken to peace, blessed be.